the story of you know, it's great, like, you know, when you met me, yeah, I thought I was a liar. Or a liar. <laughs> Welcome to the Dialects of Art series. Here we explore what it means to make art for an audience in a postmodern world. Let's get real with how artists see the world and tell their story. Your hosts are Yori and Dana Seeger, co-creators of the School of Visual Philosophy, where we believe art is a method of communication and a way of looking at the world. If you are an artist or curious about how and why artists create their work, this series is for you. So let's dive right into this episode. So the, the, the thing about us is, is either you really enjoy the things we say, or you get really bored, or you need wine to, to make that intermediary. intermediary. Um, the name of our school is Visual Philosophy for a reason. We, we sit around and we talk about these things all the time. So if this project of this, these talks is to communicate with, with mm-hmm. the public, uh, do a quick recap for me. So mm-hmm. we're talking about the dialects. We've, we've decided what that word can mm-hmm. mean. We've talked about art. We've decided what that word can mean. Mm-hmm. I want the, what, what, what's the problem? Why are you doing this? You know, what drives you? What's your solution and what do you hope to get out of it? Yeah, so the, the problem I would say is um, that number one, artists aren't really prepared for sharing their work to a specific audience. They don't understand who their audience is and how to speak to them. Number two, I would say... Due to education or... Yeah, pretty, okay. yeah. I mean, if they're if they're self-taught, then, you know, maybe they just have, don't know. I haven't even thought okay. about that. But, I mean, for me, I was, I went to art school and I got my master's degree and I it still struggled with telling my story, like, what I was doing and why to people. And yeah. it wasn't, it was like I knew what I was doing, but I just couldn't communicate it. Okay, so we got the problem. That's the problem. <laughs> What's the solution? <laughs> and what do you hope um, to get out of it? So this, I think the solution is education. I'm an educator. I'm an art educator. And I think that art is the vehicle. So, you know, we could talk about this and we could, we can open our eyes. We can open the, the eyes of the people who we're going to interview, artists, public figures, you know, art directors, um, to that kind of understanding and open communication about what the artists are expecting, what the artists don't know, and then what they, as the you know, people in leadership, understand and what they don't know and what they assume, and um, you know, how that is all affected by, oh, I don't remember what I was gonna say, is all affected by who they are, um, you know, on kind of a base level. And I feel like now is the time, it's the perfect time to kind of be specific about who we are and who are, you know, who are, what our heritage is, because America was always this melting pot, and maybe my grandparents didn't teach me their native language, because they're like, no one's going to want to learn that. You're American. Or they were even embarrassed to, to have an accent. Yeah, right. And I think that's, that is totally the opposite of the way it should be. And I think that a lot of the sort of miscommunication is because we're not letting people celebrate and own who they are. And I think that's one of my major kind of goals is to help people become, you know, proud of, again, who they own, who they are and what their kind of cultural heritage is. And even if it's not apparent, like not everyone's going to make Baltic belt paintings, but um, at least they will understand how that affects their decisions. So I also know that you've been talking to teachers uh, of different cultural backgrounds to come in and talk about their their dialects and uh, open those classes up for people to learn about mm-hmm. them, you know, and I think that's an important yeah. thing. So because you're an artist and uh, I get to interview other people, I want to ask mm-hmm. very specific questions toward that field. And I'm also in the opportunity because you are in the middle of preparing a show, which you've been at for what, 18 yes. months so far? No, yeah, probably a little longer. Uh, and it's, uh, it's a big show for you and you're thinking about all these things. Mm-hmm. Walk me through your your process. Do you have? I mean, basically, if we quit it to you know writing a novel, what's mm-hmm. what's your novel about? Mm-hmm. You know, how are you getting mm-hmm. your point across, and mm-hmm. why, and how, and what, and who, and how much hair do you lose trying to figure it out? <laughs> you mean sleep? Um, 
Yes, I have been thinking a lot about what I'm trying to say, if it really matters, how I'm going to connect with other people, because that's my main goal is just to, to spark a connection. And you what know, what do you hope they walk away with after that connection? I hope they walk away with the the strength and clarity that their own memories and identity is worth um, owning. You know, I, I I can't tell you how many times I've heard people if I post on social media, you know, post a, a work in progress. Oh, you know, I feel the same way, or oh, I didn't think anybody felt the same way. And that for me is like one of the biggest draws for being an artist and sharing my work is that other people, you know, I'm not alone in the world. <laughs> and I think that's true for a lot of people. So on this idea of, you know, memories and heritage and connection, I've also been exploring interactivity and trying to get people involved literally in the you know function of the work so when you touch a part of a piece i want it to trigger something just like you know a smell would trigger a memory and the way that i'm structuring the paintings are akin to that sort of memory haziness some parts are clear some parts come out some parts you don't really understand why they're there but they're there <laughs> um and then that but again like the Kind of getting that clarity for myself and for my audience is really what it. So you have an audience about. member. They come in. Your goal is to make a connection with them. You're making it interactive so they can literally touch mm -hmm. parts of paintings, and that has a sensor type re relationship, and something else triggers. Right, a projection or a movie so, or something. Um, so I get that. So you want to make a connection. You want to tell your story, talk about your culture. So then, tell me more then about the dialect. Mm -hmm. What is your dialect and, and what is maybe unique about it or what's different about it or what are you, how are you using yeah. the, that as an asset to tell your story? So artistically, my dialect is pictorial art and primarily um, encaustic painting and printmaking. Can you remember that question? Because I want to ask one on top of that. So give us a brief description then if, if we talked about structure in, in, in painting. Mm -hmm. So... I could talk, for example, about how to tell a story in sculpture. Mm -hmm. What are what's the sentence mm -hmm. structure? So yeah. how how do you so communicate in a painting visually like? Yeah. That? So because there's always a first impression. There's the you know the overall whole that you see first. So when you first approach a painting, there's something that strikes you. Either it's like an overall mood or a feeling or literally something that you notice first. And my goal is to direct that kind of view. So I really want to focus people where I want them to focus and then be drawn around the piece in an organized way. And not everybody is obviously going to do this, but I do this through changes of contrast, light and dark, color, detail, haziness. Um, so there's these elements that go into, you know, that painting and printmaking. Um, and then further with printmaking, because I can uh, create multiples, I don't necessarily create additions, which are the same thing, you know, 10 of the same thing, but the elements repeat because that is the way that I stay consistent with the, with my voice. So these objects and um, symbols kind of go on a journey through the work and you can pick them out. So if you see, hopefully when you see the body of work together, you'll be able to recognize, you know, elements and be drawn to where those are and maybe go back and say, oh, now it's, you know, what's it doing in this one and why is it covered up and why is it revealing and um, just the way that similar things in my life keep popping up and, you know, the past and all these thing trinkets and gifts that I was given, you know, keep reappearing and then triggering other things that. So your, your and, process is to basically trigger memory in somebody and have them kind of go along a similar path as the painting describes. Yeah. Okay, so then back to the uniqueness part of, of your dialect. What's, uh, for example, I know, because I know you well, you've been studying things like Mara and Zalktis mm -hmm. and they show up in your paintings. Mm -hmm. Is that um, something you expect people to know? Are you going to give them clues? Are you going to have you a know, chart? This is how you read this? I don't know. I've been struggling with that because, I mean, even with the, even with the interactivity, like I know I'm going to have to tell people either with a You plaque. have to touch this painting yeah. because normally there's a big sign that says do not touch <laughs> this painting. That's a new new. Yeah. Yes. And it's tough because I want 
it to be or an organic experience. I want the work to flow and the, the path that people follow to flow. But I also know that, you know, there's things that are hidden that people will need to discover. And I think a statement is something that can apply to that. So I might include some of those details in, an, in my artist statement. And each of the pieces might have a separate statement. I haven't quite figured that out yet. Um, but I feel like that's a good addition or supplement to work. Um, and along that line, the, the specifics about what I'm doing with my, you know, heritage apply also to my contemporary life because there's things like windmills that trigger in me the fact that people back then, you know, were understanding things about nature, about energy and um, just through resources mm -hmm. that people need to relearn. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that may have been forgotten that are kind of being relearned. And I think that's kind of those cycles that I keep alluding to. Another part of why I'm doing this is to connect with the public and really ask people, well, what do you think, you know, art is? What is art to you? What does public art mean? And is it relevant? You know, things that, that I take for granted, but that, you know, people might not. Okay. See, the same way I do. Well, thank you. Well, that's a wrap on episode two in our Dialects of Art series. 